What is the end goal that you always want to reach? What is the end goal in that situation? What is the end goal for your day? And how are your emotions taking, playing a part in that? So when I look at all the things that I've created from, from in-person and digital events to documentary films to shows, live shows to my podcast, they all run the same themes. Bringing yes. community together, lifting people up. It's about mentorship. It's about good conversation. It's about learning from one another. It's about creating a culture that is kind, mm -hmm. empathic. Mm -hmm. They lean in. We're having conversations. We're understanding. We're productive. We're, there's so many things. And we're getting messages across where it's kind of like that pebble that you yeah. throw in the water and you get those concentric circles. So it's so nice to have you here, Summer. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> yes, I, I I spoke to you already once and it was um I well and then had actually met you that time, no? Yeah. And it was um such a beautiful conversation. It that could have gone much further <laughs> not <laughs> non-stop non-stop i know i very much enjoyed our conversation so yeah it could have gone on I, we talked about so many different things and it was so organic and natural mm -hmm. so yeah. which is why i loved you know talking to you and also love being here because this is exactly how we're gonna do something organic and just kind of natural yes here. yes it's the same thing we're just here co-creating a conversation just um sharing what with what comes today so every day is different no every moment is different absolutely absolutely it certainly is so yeah. yes 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 so um well here we are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some time has gone huh Yes. So it's interesting because we're here and we're just, um, you know, we're allowing the conversation to happen. And I think, you know, for me, just as of late in my moments, if you're talking about moments and what's really, you know, things that I'm co-creating with others mm -hmm. that are important to me, that have been in alignment with what's important to me. And how I want to spend my time and my yeah. energy really has to do with building community. And so mm -hmm. it's about mm -hmm. conversations. Yes. It's about meeting with people. Yes. The other aspect of that is mentorship. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's really important. And those are the two things that I really find myself putting my energy into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and they are connected because they are connected. They're not, they're not individual by any means. They are mm -hmm. very connected because they run along the same lines in regards to my values. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So building community, mentorship, supporting others, um, creating environments, safe environments for good conversations, for meaningful yes. and intentional conversations, and more importantly for authenticity yes i think as i was working in corporate we followed a lot of rules and yeah. regulations right there's in the medical field there's a lot of rules there's a lot of regulations and there's not a lot of time to be humorous or mm -hmm. to find levity in a situation because most of the things that we're dealing with in a medical arena, it, they're serious and people are coming to you with very serious problems. Yes. And yet, and it's hard to sometimes with people to find levity in that, or there's not time to joke, but in between those intersectional times of between patients, you know, during meetings, that's where we would find some of that jovialness, that, mm -hmm. you know, that levity, that, that humor, not in what people are dealing with, no, but no. in ourselves, right? Yes. Because yes. we needed an outlet and we needed to create safe spaces for ourselves because we were dealing with people in trauma constantly. 
And some of the clinicians were also dealing with trauma mm-hmm. too because mm-hmm. they were attacked by patients. Yes. Um, they, you know, we see, we would see patients every day. I work in mental health. So when, <laughs> when I would work at a hospital, it was, People were coming to see you because they were actually suicidal, homicidal, greatly disabled, or they had all of the above depression, suicidality, you know, all of it. And it was very intense many times. And or somebody could be maybe in a fluidly psychotic uh, episode. And so it was... How do you communicate effectively where this person can hear you? There's not a lot of time Mm. for jokes and you got to be really focused and ready for anything. And yet, you know, really taking into consideration that person's lived experience, what they're going through then to be respectful and understanding and being able to take in what they're saying because we have a lot of questions Mm -hmm. and we're doing a lot of observation as Mm -hmm. well so you know when i say and made the shift rather to entrepreneurship i wanted things that i wasn't necessarily getting met in like the corporate world Mm -hmm. how was i going to function how was i going to create spaces that were very engaging that allowed for maybe a little bit more of that lighter levity, that that lighter feeling, and things weren't quite as intense, yeah. right? So to me, it still fell along the lines of my values, which were to create safe spaces, because I wanted to do that both in my clinical environment as well as in my entrepreneurship environment, mm-hmm. so whether mm-hmm. that was creating events, mm-hmm. you know, digitally or in person whether or not that was creating a film and i've created three documentary films no four Mm -hmm. wow yes wow four documentary films so always creating these safe spaces because we were still talking about human things you know human experiences and when you do that you have to be ready to take in any emotion and all the feels right And so that leads me to another thing that leads me to a show that I have co-created with my partner Mm -hmm. called The Emotional Entrepreneur. And it's about understanding emotions. And I think emotions get a bad rap because I think there's a distinction between emotions and emotionality, right? And we all have emotions. Yes, we all have emotions. But how we experience (laughs) that or how we, you know, put that out into the world or how we respond to either our emotions or somebody else's is what makes the big shift, which makes the big difference, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at emotions, and this is something we talk about on the show is if you want to reach an end goal, and although we each have our emotions, start feeling what those are, start being able to identify what those emotions are, because guess what? We wake up feeling a certain way. We go to sleep feeling a certain way and all those minutes in between and moments in the middle are filled with emotions, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. how we respond versus how we react Mm -hmm. to those emotions make a very big difference. So my thing is, What is the end goal that you always want to reach? What is the end goal in that situation? What is the end goal for your day? And how are your emotions taking, playing a part in that? So when I look at all the things that I've created from from in-person and digital events to documentary films to shows, live shows to my podcasts, they all run the same themes. Bringing yes. community together, lifting people up. It's about mentorship. It's about good conversation. It's about learning from one another. It's about creating a culture that is kind, mm-hmm. empathic. Mm-hmm. They lean in. We're having conversations. We're understanding. We're productive. We're, there's so many things. And we're getting messages across where it's kind of like that pebble that you yeah. throw in the water and you get those concentric circles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, yes. So where you yes. start a conversation and build those circles. Yes. Ripples. 
the ripples. It has a rip, exactly, yes. beautiful word, ripple effect, right? So when you model, you mentor, you have and create safe places, you create a culture of understanding, a culture of empathy, a culture of, yes, you can have levity in, in amongst it. You know, you can have special moments, just like we did when we had our first conversation, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is what led to this conversation. Yes, yes. Yes, it's really beautiful. And it's so nice to see that you are creating all, all of that. And uh, and you, cre you create all of that because you create it through who you are. Yeah. And that's why it's everything is so related, no? And you love doing it because you are, you are expressing who you are, your uniqueness through that. Absolutely. No? And I hope that when I work with people, mm -hmm. they can also figure that out for themselves. Yeah. What are yes. the themes? What are the principles? What are the values that they that are creating the foundation for what they do, mm -hmm. that, which runs through everything they do, right? Mm -hmm. What do mm -hmm. you stand for? Yes. What are, you know, I mean, I can use the same standard language that you know many coaches use like your pillars your principles your values but it, it they are meaningful those words are not just words but they mm -hmm. are something to put into practice and that's what I think is also important to me is no matter if I go to some kind of talk seminar um, maybe even a sermon of some sort and I'm inspired mm-hmm mm-hmm I love that feeling. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do. But if they leave me without practical applications to be able to apply that to my daily life, then it falls flat. I almost feel like I'm setting people up for failure in a way mm -hmm. because I'm not giving them certain steps mm -hmm. to begin the process, right? But their process is going to look different than my process. Yes, yes. And that's... That's okay, because yes. what works for me may not work exactly for Jeanette. It may mm -hmm. not work for Steve. It may mm -hmm. not work for John, yes. right? But, but that's what coaching is all about. Mm -hmm. It's to have these conversations where you're kind of drawing out from the individual, the group, the, co the, the company, mm -hmm. what is going to work for them based on the foundation that they want to build. And what are the themes that are going to run into everything they're building yes from programs to a company to an event what are those things mm -hmm. yes, and are you yes. going to stand true to them and let me give you a quick example of this mm -hmm. yes Happy. so and i and i say and i'm going to repeat this what you stand for what you strand stand in alignment with or true to and i reiterate that because when you look at the things that you're doing are the things that you're doing because you've been conditioned to do mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. or are they things that you're doing because they truly speak to who you are. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book called F. Yeah, get real with strong language and people are like, Oh my God, that title, right? You know, it's, you're using cuss, you're cussing or, or, you know, language that's, you know, that's bad. And I, and here's the thing. I don't objectify the language, right? Yeah. I'm not objectifying the word ish or, F mm -hmm. or what I, that's, that's not for me to say, but I no. use it as a subject matter to really understand your values because it's a sensitive subject matter for a lot of people. It's mm -hmm. a sensitive subject matter when you're raising kids. And mm -hmm. most of the time what you hear is, Oh, you shouldn't say that. That's a bad word. Oh my gosh, you're going to get in trouble if you say that, right? And so the thing is, that's what we've been conditioned to. Learn. Yes, yes. Okay. I get it. My parents said the same thing. However, they also use the language. Mm -hmm. They use the strong language. And I was like, well, how can you be a hypocrite? You yeah. use the language, but you're telling me not to use the language, yes. right? Yes. And yet my grandfather used the language and yet I still respected all of these people just because they used the language didn't mean that they were bad. Mm -hmm. It meant that 
that's just something they did. Now, however, there's a distinct line from, and here's where my clinical side comes in. There's uh-huh. a distinction between antisocial personality from a clinical perspective and asocial personality. So asocial is just, you know, more like you you just don't want to go to party. You don't really, you're not really a social person. Now, antisocial personality is more like, criminal criminal acts you're Mm. interfering with people you're hurting people you're not respecting their person their material their their belongings Mm -hmm. any of that you're hurting animals that's antisocial okay a social is more like eh, i just this is the way i look at it from my perspective yeah so when i say this i don't think it's antisocial or wrong to use strong language right but that's for other people to determine for themselves, right? And so we use the idea or subject of strong language to really call out and take people through a kind of a, a workbook of sorts to understand their own personal values. Mm-hmm. Because if you've been told something all your life, you might think that you also align with that or believe that. Yes. But, but what if you don't? No. no have you no, taken no. in the world? Have you experienced the mm-hmm. world? Have you understood? Do you under really understand yourself and what your beliefs are outside of the conditioning? Because here's what I don't like to hear. I do that because I was taught how to do that. I do that because yes, I've yes. Always I don't it. know why, but it, I was told, yeah. Or I always have done no, it. I, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't change. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't get in touch with who you are, Mm -hmm. how you function, what your beliefs are, and get really solid about that. Because if you're living somebody else's beliefs and values, are you really living in congruency with how you feel, how you want to live? And is it fulfilling for you? Does it feel good? No, not certainly not. I won't. Because it's not me, not my values. I'm adhering to something outside of myself, of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm living for someone else. Exactly. It doesn't feel authentic. No. And that disingenuous, inauthentic feeling can be really overwhelming. It can be really toxic. Yes. In a way, yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And yes. I want yes. to help people. Get away from that toxicity, Mm -hmm. understand what's happening to them. Because I think it really hardens people. And they don't see it, no? They don't see it. A lot of times they can't see it. So that's when like, step outside of Mm -hmm. yourself. Understand that there are other people learning different things. Do you have to take all those new learnings on? No. But can you hear and be open to different ideas? sure how that might impact you influence you that's up to you Mm -hmm. but being open to that having those exchanges is important yes because that's when people feel like there's growth Mm -hmm. there's connection just being heard yes yes you just say to somebody i hear you yes you know i understand what you're trying to say or I'm taking this in and I respect what you're saying, right? And I think that goes a long way without, no, I don't believe that. No, we can't do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, that's just like shutting it down, turn it up, turning it off and just boom, right? No, no. I think that when it comes to mentorship and something that I'm currently working on is cross-generational mentorship. If people who are older turn off the opinions and ideas of our youth, Mm -hmm. our younger professionals, our youth, how are we open? How are we, how are we taking in new ideas? How are we growing? How are we developing them as good leaders? Yes. Because guess what they're going to do to us? If we model that same behavior, put up walls, shut them down. Guess what we're modeling? The same thing. Mm -hmm. They're going to learn how to do that. Yeah. yeah. No, no. You know, I was, I worked, so I I went to University of California, Berkeley, and when I, in undergrad, and I had not my first job, but it was a job that, it was a student service job, so I worked in the student union, and they had a lot of different shops, and my boss, she was amazing, 
So she taught me how to be an under security professional where Mm -hmm. I would look for shoplifters, right? We'd have to write them up if they were stealing, blah, blah, blah. And that was my job. And I also went to school, you know, I took 17 units. I worked 30 hours a week. I did a lot of things. But the reason I'm telling the story is because one day she had promoted me to supervisor and a lot of the other security guards who were also students, they, and we were undercover. So we could wear plain clothes. We could, you know, we just walked around like everybody else. We were watching people and we wrote up reports and did all these things. Well, she had, uh, she had, you know, promoted me to supervisor and the, the men there, they would do all kinds of things like, you know, tease me, you know, they would like go like this and say, Oh, how big is your waist? You know, Mm -hmm. and it should only be like this, not that, you know, all these different things. And I, and I came to her and I was like, I just don't get it. I I just, I want to be a better supervisor, but I just, you know, they're they're frustrating. And she goes, well, listen to them, you know, just listen to them, you know, break down walls, break down barriers, you know, and this is how you can do A, B, or C, right? You can listen to them. You can create these safe spaces. She was so insightful and I was young, Mm -hmm. you know, I was 18, 19 years Mm -hmm. old, you know, it wasn't my first job. I mean, I started working at 15, but to have somebody like her tell me these things and show me through her own actions and show me her behavior, even in intense situations where we're apprehending a, a shoplifter or mm-hmm. doing different things. It's like, she still was able to model that great behavior, create safe spaces, even for the, the person who was being apprehended, right? Because she knew they had rights and privileges yes. as well. And yes. so I thought that, that is a good model. Mm-hmm. She's teaching me a lot about leadership. Mm -hmm. She's teaching me about how to communicate better. She's teaching me about how to create safe spaces. She's mentoring me. And we came from different walks of life, right? We came from different backgrounds. She was from Philly. I'm from California. I was, you know, she taught me a lot of different things that I didn't know. And I respected her wholeheartedly. And, you know, to this day, I wish I could talk to her. I wish I knew (laughs) where she was just to say thank you. Mm. Because there were so many people in my life like that who served as mentors, which is why, when I talk about community building and I talk about mentorship, it really does align with my values and really how I want to support my clients, whether or not that's a person, a group, or a company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, and it comes. It comes because um, I see now. So in my case, back at the end, it's we have lived experiences where we have been empowered by people that have um had some values for them and that they had expressed them in us in in and for instance in my case my first boss i will always remember seven i was also um no i wasn't 17 i was 20 <laughs> 24 i think and uh we but we traveled a lot very much and we was we were in many projects at the same time 150 uh, percent assigned yeah. so and and he always said, and it was very nice, he always said, one thing is, the most important thing is your health. Without health, there's nothing else. So don't worry if you don't feel okay, don't come to work, it's okay. Or or your family, if you have issues, no worries. Or also this empowerment, this commitment, no, for, for uh, he did, um, they did, we we worked all together in, in many places. Everyone, we were so motivated to work 150 percent because we were learning and we were we were valued. Yes. So, so important. Yes, and so motivation and empowerment came because they they he he gave us this um, trust and this uh, that you will be okay. Don't worry, you will manage. No. And uh, those values at the end, you learn from them, you experience them, and they become also part of you of how I am leading, let's say, because they have been positive. I also had negative ones, and you're there, you already also know what's not good <laughs> in, in with other people, no? But uh, I think through experiencing and through getting empowered, 
you used another word which I loved more, this lifting up. Yes. Um, people are, are, are able to flourish. Yes, I agree. I love that word, flourish, flourish right? Yes. They're able to bloom and blossom. Mm -hmm, to bloom, and, yeah. yeah. And here's the thing. I see a lot of, especially on social media, and especially with our youth, where they start comparing, mm -hmm. right? Yes. This point of comparison. Yeah. And I think that's when it becomes unhealthy. Yeah. Because there's good comparison, but then there's that toxic comparison, yes. right? Yes. And there's always that dichotomy, right? Good and bad. I get an evil, you know, like good social media, not so great social media. Right. And, and I think it comes with that comparison. There's a natural ability in all of us to compare. And I think that mm -hmm. in some cases it makes us do better. It, it, it raises the bar for us to go, Oh, we can do that. And maybe we can go even higher. Right. But, but it's not the comparison where it's like, Oh, look at that person. And that's making me jealous yeah. or that's impacting my mm. mood or that's impacting the way that I'm going to do something or not do something or inhibit you from doing something. Right. And here's what I say about that. One, make sure as you're using social media and mm -hmm. you're looking at people around you, you're doing it in a way with, of kindness, of appreciation and knowing that there's space for you and you and me and everybody else to do things in our own way. Yes. There's not a, another Jeanette Meyer. There's not another mm -mm. summer, you know, Deanna Watson. There's not another, you know, there's, yeah. we are each individuals that bring something special and unique to a table. Right. And that's why it's so important when you're working with other people, whether it's an individual group or team to be open to those ideas, to be open to those conversations, to develop those relationships with meaning and intention and understanding. And it goes so much further mm -hmm. than when you lock it down no, or, no, you no. Cut it out or you turn it off. Here's something I love that you mentioned, Jeanette. You mentioned lived experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. One of the things that I've done with my doctoral degree when I was writing my dissertation was look at how we practice phenomenology. Mm -hmm. And I actually applied phenomenology, and I'll tell you what that is, yeah. phenomenology to my methodology, to how I study people. All that means it's a big word for looking at somebody's lived experience. Mm -hmm. That's all it means. Mm -hmm. And there's a method to it, right? And so when somebody works with me, I mean, they're not just, I'm not just like, oh, I'm going to coach you. I'm going to do, you know, no, I'm looking at your phenomenology, your lived experience. I'm looking at your process and how you do things. I'm looking at your mindset and your conditioning. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a lot of different variables. I'm doing that assessment of sorts with that person, group, company, so that we get a better idea of how this person's lived experience looks like, yeah. what it is, what their process is, where they've come from, mm -hmm. what influences their behavior, right? Yes. And so- one of the programs that is that I mentioned earlier that I'm working on is this cross-generational mentorship program. And the reason I'm doing that is because we do look at a lot of different factors related to generational gaps that we want to bridge, right? We want to bring generations together to influence each other, to understand each other, to better work with each other, to make for a more exciting more healthy workplace environment and culture. And so the success rate with mentorship goes way up. The increase or the decrease of money that is lost per person per year in a company is decreased because mm -hmm. of mentorship. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much value to it, but what we're bringing in is that cross-generational perspective. Yeah. How are we going to bridge that gap between generations? And what does that look like? 
I know we've done it from generation to generation, and I've heard it even growing up myself as a teen, as a young adult. Oh, look at these kids. They don't know such and such, where they haven't learned what we, we've learned. That might be true. I think a lot of things come with wisdom and time. But on the other hand, things are changing so rapidly Yeah. that we need to hear our younger folks, our younger Yes. professionals, and understand what's changing and not fear it, No. right? And I think Yeah. there's a lot of fear and a lot of resistance because of that fear. Mm -hmm. And the more that we integrate together and understand and open those conversations, we're going to build, as you said, a trust. Yes. We're going to build... a better foundation for that company or that business. We're going to build a better foundation of understanding in our youth to be better leaders. Mm hmm. Mm So, hmm. you know, I, everything I do is based off those same principles to empower, to inspire, to learn, to grow, to understand, and to move forward where we're making a better place, a better Yeah. world, a better company. Right. Yes. Yes. And I want to Yes. help through people you. be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Because you are it for yourself also. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So And, I and, Sorry, you, you were talking about comparison, not the good one and the bad one. And the, the good one you were explaining is inspiration. At the end, it's inspiration, no? Because... inspiration, empowerment, right? You want to, you want to inspire, but you also want to empower Mm so hmm that you can Yeah. take away information that they can apply to their position, to their job, to the company where Everybody is working cohesively, happily, understand. I mean, there's always going to be like some issue because there's, this is, we're human, right? But if we can get to that faster, more efficiently, because we have that open dialogue, Mm we've -hmm, created mm -hmm. big spaces for conversations. Mm -hmm. We've created, you know, minimal resistance to Mm under, -hmm. for new ideas. It looks different. Yes. It feels different. It feels totally It different. feels different. Yeah. And it's a place to grow because if you feel safe, you open your heart. The other one open your heart and you grow with that. No, much is also relationships are for that to to. to grow, to get mirrored, to understand, you no know, things that, that you normally not able to see. But when you open the heart, you are you are um ready for change. You are ready for um for input. You are ready for anything. Yeah, you're ready to take in and absorb, Yes. understand In that love, person, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think it increases, oh, it totally increases productivity, Yes. right? Here's Yes. the other thing it does. Mm-hmm. When you create a culture like that, guess what that does for your company or your brand? It skyrockets, man, because you've got that mutual investment and understanding between each other that people want to go out and talk about you. Yes. They Yes. want to go out and talk about your brand. They want to work there. They Yes. want to stay there. So guess what that does? The retention goes up. The longevity of who, people you have in your company stays high. There's so many benefits to this that it just, I tingle all over thinking about it because it's just so exciting. And I've seen it in action, <laughs> mm right? hmm me I've too seen yeah it in action growing up in the companies that I've worked for, different companies, not all of them, but different companies, mm hmm because there are parameters to certain things that we do. Like, for instance, I'll give you a for instance. yeah It was funny. This is just how I am. Uh, I was getting surgery. I was getting prepped for surgery. I had a, a malignant tumor in my left lung mm hmm and in no, November of last year. mm hmm And my surgeon is in the, it's in, he's in the room, he's on a computer and they're rolling me in. And I was like, Hey, good morning, Dr. Such and such. I'm like, I see that you're focused. And, and I'm just like making levity, you know, Yeah, cut yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a scary place to Yes, be. Right? It's yes. getting surgery. You got a malignant tumor. Like this is scary. So I'm trying to lighten the mood, Mm hmm but He doesn't even look at me. No, wow. Well. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't look at me. He's on his computer. And I just sat there going, okay, all right. Hmm. Okay. And then I started thinking about it. I thought, do I want this man to be focused, to be engaged in what he's doing right now? Because he's going to be dealing with a computer 
that's got five little fingers that's mm-hmm. going to be going into my lung that I'm like, no, it's okay that he doesn't <laughs> I'm happy. Right I'm happy for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that because guess what? That was an environment that called for that attention, yes. that called yes. for the focus. That after he was done, he literally, he turns around and goes, hi. <laughs> no, it's it's so, it was so weird. He goes, hi. He puts his hand on my hand and he goes, you're going to be okay. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. He's not overly emotive as a person anyway, right? Yeah. Which I knew. So inside I was laughing going, this is the best that he can do emotionally. <laughs> and that's okay too. Right. And so, yeah. you know, just as long as you have an understanding too of like how people respond or react or where they are or how social they are we're not the same no we're not right? the same we're, we're not, not the same. same and that's okay because yes. you know what we needed him i needed yes. him to be that way yes right yes and that's okay that he was focused that he was pensive that he was he was so in tune with what he was doing that it wasn't until he was done they turned around and he said hi yes I was like, okay, we're okay here. It went all okay. It, it, it went all okay. okay. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I didn't take a bit. I just had to think of it differently, right? And if we allow ourselves to do that, to mm-hmm. embrace different perspectives, yes. to have a better understanding, I think we, we'd be kinder to each other. Yes. Right? We wouldn't yes. get so elevated so quickly. No. We would, you know, we would look at the end goal we want for ourselves. And my end goal was to make sure that he did that surgery. <laughs> fighter pilot like the best jet pilot best surgeon you could ever have right yes yes. so that was my end goal so I wasn't going to ruffle any feathers I was going to make sure I understood where he was coming from and what his job was and what he needed to do that's what that's what that was all about and I was good with it right so I think when we have that internal thinking those internal thoughts that Mm -hmm. could potentially create a reaction right Mm -hmm. because our emotions i don't think we have to be reactive we can be responsive responsive yes more intuitive and and think about Mm -hmm. kind of what do we want as an end goal yes also how are we how are we really responding to something that maybe doesn't need to be accelerated or or a reaction doesn't have to be involved, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe you have a better understanding on that person. Or maybe you ask clar- clarifying questions. And which is which is also what I did. I was asking him like, okay, so what's gonna happen here? And da 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 and you know, what's the next step? And and we talked about that stuff, but he was present at that moment, but he had to do something before that. Mm-hmm. Nice, yes. Yes. So, he had anyway. the responsibility accountability to do and then he was there then he was more personable then he could be focused and present in that moment he could create a safer space emotionally with me and have that connection that trust right so when you build that connection you build that foundation you create better trust you you create a safer space and so you know that's just one example Yes, and that's the importance of this observation of your thoughts no? yeah. and of your actions to be able to respond and not react. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Yes, yes. Wow, <laughs> we've talked about so much. <laughs> yes, I appreciate it so much, <laughs> Summer. I'm really, really grateful for having had you here, for having you now here and Thank for you. sharing with you and co-creating with you. I loved it. Thank you, Jeanette. (laughs) Thank you so much. And uh, there's always a next time. I love that. Thank you.